Today we learn if the Oakland Athletics are back-to-back -back AL West champions or if our route to the postseason goes through the wild card instead. We have four games to go and are a game and a half behind the Texas Rangers. So we're going to have to win and get some help from the San Francisco Giants in the final games of the year. Either way, we know next episode we are back to the postseason in this series and I've been really looking forward to it. I think we have a team this year that, although flawed at times, has a chance to go deep into the postseason. We've got an excellent pitching staff and a really good offense, but they have their periods where they feel like something's missing. This is not one of those times, however, as September's gone extremely well. And one of our hottest players here in the last two weeks has been Yusniel Cruz. So I talked about him last episode and how well he had been playing, but he actually took it a step further in the last episode, hitting seven home runs in seven days. Cruz hit two home runs on the 18th against the Angels, a home run the following day, homered again in our victory against the Mariners, and had another multi-home run game the following day against Seattle. He then homered again in the finale. Unreal stretch for Cruz, and now a legit chance to hit 30 home runs on the season, and to of course have a chance at entering the postseason red hot, while also making a last uh, case for his Rookie of the Year standing, which he's now leapfrogged Henry Vasquez, who I thought he would not be able to catch. So we're hoping Cruz can hit number 30, but also Fran Mill Reyes, one home run away from number 40, along with six RBIs away from a 100 RBI season. At the same time, Joe Michael has one more start scheduled. If we are still in the division hunt, he will get that game. Otherwise, we'll probably just end up pulling him from that start, keeping him at 19 victories, but he might have a chance at 20. Let's play some baseball. Four games left to go in the season, and Texas has this game off, or this day off. So we have a chance to get a half game back of ground, and we're going to do some player lock in this one with Yusniel Cruz. Easily in the hottest stretch of his young MLB career, a 10-game hitting streak, coming off seven homers in seven days. A chance to put us up early. Lifted to right center, but just missed it, it looks like. Run down for the second out. I've noticed a lot of my swings with him are just a uh, split second, a small fraction late. If I could just speed that up a tiny bit. That's on the ground and a good pick at third as Cruz is retired. We get a run back and we'll try it again here in the fifth against Taylor Dollard. Ooh, good pitch over the middle. Got a strike there on the inside edge. I've been trying to be a little more patient at times when I know I'm swinging at a lot of first pitches. That's usually about the time I got to change up in the middle of the zone. Cruz gone here. He's 0 for 3. Let's see if we can tack on some more offense and not yet. Top 6, we got Jared Kelnick against Logan Gilbert. Another start for Gilbert against his former team. And that one should be a routine play for Cruz. Defensively, he's certainly gotten a lot better this year. We can't see the attribute growth from this screen, but those ratings are solid, definitely playable now. They've gotten better throughout the year. Kendrick Haynes now in the game, and this one is lifted to deep left field, and Haynes gives up another long ball. Why did I feel like when we saw Haynes was in the game, we were about to see one fly out? Come on. He's got a home run problem. It is now 3-1. We're still not out of the inning. It's Cleveland Haynes. I passed on him to draft Gregorio Uribe way back when. And now delivers a base hit to Cruz in left. So Haynes into some trouble here. And let's see, Seattle doesn't add any more, but this could be the last chance in this game for you, Sneal Cruz. Lucas Sims on the mound, and a gotta-have-it game. 
If this score holds and we lose, it won't look good. A loss in this game would drop us three games behind the Rangers. So we would then have to win out our last three, and they would have to lose out their last three. Ah, oh, ah, oh man. I saw his slider a couple times, and I think I was waiting for that one to also tail on out of the zone. We go top nine. Another fly ball hit deep to the wall and left. But, oh! Wasn't in the right spot, I guess? And things have gone from bad to worse in this game. 3-1, bases loaded. We're going to jump in now with Andre Palante and what could be a two-run single. Mariners building this lead. Oh, we beat two games back. That's right. I thought for some reason they were already two and a half up and not one and a half. Still not a good uh, spot for us here. Now they're going to double steal, and Vargas... Oh, that's foul. Got him on the fastball. Getting ahead of Juan Soto. In most situations, I'd probably just sim us to the end, roughly, because, you know, we're down four. But given how crucial these games are, we're going to play this out. See if a miracle can get us four runs. Fouled back a fastball. We got Vladimir Guerrero, who is on a hot streak right now. And he is behind in the count one, two. Ooh, a nasty slur from Sims. Doesn't get the call. Sometimes you throw a pitch too good, it looks like a ball. Two and two. Lifted to center. And a routine play. Don has two hits on the day. He'll get a chance now against Sims. And hammers one to right field, but again, easy play. All right, four runs, and we got two down. That's what we need. Royce Lewis is two for three. And it's a base hit to right field. We're not going away quite yet. Now they're going to make a move with Chris Flexen. And we got Daniel Susak here. I, I think I want to pinch hit for him. I tried to call for time. I'm going to take him out. And you know what? If we somehow extend this game, that's great. But I'm going to put in Manny Reyes. It's Soderstrom's off day. He's only going to come in if we somehow force extra innings. Manny Reyes with two away. 2-0. Three and zero now, and Reyes is ahead of Vargas, and then Arise. That's what we got to get to, Luis Arise. Fouled off. Could have been ball four. Full count. And on the ground, chase ball four that time. The game is over. Mariners take the first of four, dropping us to two games back in the division. So our room for error is shrinking. Going back to Cruz here for a second. Here's how much his defense has improved. Four on fielding and reaction. Three on the arm accuracy and arm strength. I think he's going to be just fine. The one thing that is going down this year is his contact against lefties, despite the power against lefties absolutely surging. He's had five homers against lefties while hitting... 248 so i'm not quite sure why the power is going up that much or why the contact is going down that much at times this game does a really good job of really showing you how a player is changing and adjusting ratings to their in-game performance but it doesn't always make sense it's not always intuitive but we're going to move on to our next game today and this one's going to feature henry vasquez who originally came up only because logan gilbert got injured and he played so well, we ended up sending Cam Cope back down to AAA after he did not adapt well to his bullpen role whatsoever. So we have Vasquez, who until Cruz had this historic week, 
he was in line to be rookie of the year. And maybe if he has one great performance here at the end, he can make his final case. But he's been a tremendous add to this rotation. He's done a, a great job getting strikeouts, limiting homers. He's been really valuable. And here he is now in a gotta have it game against the Mariners in game two. Looking for win 14. And down below, we'll see if a uh, Texas update shows up. We want to see them lose their first game to San Francisco. It says we're two and a half back, which tells you that uh, they won their game today. So from this point on, then, we are going to have to win out. And then the Giants got to take the final two in that series. The day opens with a five-pitch walk of Cleveland Haynes. Brings up Enrique Zapata. I feel like we've gotten so familiar with this lineup. I know they didn't have Haynes for all this year. I think he was a late addition, but I think we've played a lot of games against them. Slider gets him strike three. Yeah, there's the update down below. Rangers can clinch the West and first appearance in the postseason in two years with a victory. Clipping the edge against Soto. I do want to see how close the Giants made that game, though. Got the second strike in there at the knees. Got him on three pitches and three excellent pitches at that. Now we get Julio Rodriguez with two down as Vasquez again struggles to get strike one. There it is. So if the Rangers take this division, it's the Twins that we're likely going to meet. Line to second base, good top of the first. And we got three runs in the bottom half. Good start. Gotta have these games here, and Michael is scheduled to pitch the following day, and we will play that game as long as we win this one. Or he will play that one as long as we win this one. Really banking on us having a chance into the final day in this episode. Oh, wait a minute. Their score, they've just opened their game. It said we were two and a half back. There's strike three. Maybe I had the uh, the days off or something. Either way, we got to win. They got to lose. So San Francisco, do us a favor. Michael Tolia, right back to Vasquez. Diving play, arise. Okay. That's the best defensive play I've seen him make in many episodes. That's going to the gap, and it is out of reach. Cal Raleigh on his way to second base with a stand-up double. Getting ahead of Haynes now. Trying to get this second out, and Vasquez gets the weak ground ball. Popped him up into center field, and that should keep the run off the board. Three scoreless for Henry Vasquez. Again ahead of Juan Soto. Struck him out on three pitches in the first time they faced. And he strikes him out again. Hey, in sports, we love nothing more than a good underdog story. And we had Vasquez seemingly locked in as the rookie of the year. And then the top prospect, number one pick, anything but an underdog comes in, mashes seven homers in a week. And now we could just see what we thought we'd be seeing all along. Kind of conflicting. This was a chance for a pretty cool rookie of the year story. Not that Cruz winning it is not cool or anything. Top of the fifth, Tolia takes outside. This count runs full. Looking for another punch out and not getting it, but speared by Guerrero. 
Guerrero does it again to close the inning. Well, the only player to really get a hit off of him today seems to be Cal Raleigh, who just bounced through an infield single. Now we face Cleveland Haynes in the one spot. Got him on strikes. Jammed, and this one makes its way past a rise. Two on now for the Mariners. Juan Soto. There's no way he strikes out again, especially if that's what we're throwing. Down the line for a hit. For a run coming around, and it's a 5-1 ball game. Now you got to deal with Julio Rodriguez. That one misses low. Ooh, another miss on the change. Julio just missing a three-run homer. Got him looking. And that just leaves Jared Kelnick. Really good pitch, and he muscles it into center field. It scores the second run. Could be his final inning, hoping it ends with the lead intact still. Michael Tolia. Out in front. A lot of swing and miss stuff for Vasquez. And a line drive base hit. Soto coming around. He will score, and it's 5-3. to three. And I have no idea what's happening in the Texas Giants game, but our lead is shrinking. We're trusting Vasquez to wrap up the inning. Good slider away to the right-handed Morrell. Come on, man. Full count now. Vasquez pops him up to right field. They get three. And now things are a little trickier. Vasquez coming out to start the seventh. I might have to... Uh, just make the decision here on my own because I don't need to see more. Not after last inning. I'm okay with Hernandez. Two strikes here on Cal Raleigh. Already two for two in this game. Hernandez gets him out in front. The main reason I'm playing this game still is to see if Texas is winning or what their situation is. Two gone. Cleveland Haynes. We're getting the American League updates now, so should see Texas here in a moment. Haynes pops it up for a rise. Catch is made. Fran Mill Reyes still sitting at 39 home runs, 94 RBIs. And we could use our little rebuild to our lead. On the ground. Backhanded and gone on one pitch. Scorched into right field. Soderstrom going to have extras. Could not cut the ball off, and that cost the Mariners with Soderstrom getting a double. Let's go to Usneel Cruz now. I want to see the numbers. Still 29 home runs. Time is running out for these two to reach their milestones. Outside, taking ball one. Texas should be the next team on the update, I thought. Nope, apparently not. Phillies Nationals. Ah, oh, man. Jammed to right. The wait continues. Base hit center field. Sweeney delivering and Soderstrom on his way to score. 6-3 Oakland. There's the update, by the way. The Rangers are beating the Giants 8-6 in the seventh inning. We're top of the eighth inning. Ricky Griggs is now in and Soto clobbers this deep to right field. And keeps it fair. It's gone. I think he took the two strikeouts earlier. Very personally. No mistaking that sound when it comes off his bat. 
Managed to wrap it around the foul pole. So Julio now up to face Griggs with a two-run game. We don't need any more drama in this one. Now I'd also have to see if in the wild card standings there's at all a chance of us slipping to the second wild card. I don't think so. Popped him up. Vargas wants this one. Out number two. Griggs pitching to Jared Kelnick. It's a full count with two away. And Griggs walks him and brings the tying run to the plate. Michael Tolia, who is going to face a new pitcher. It'll be Eli Morgan. Howled off. Big A-B here for Morgan. Curveball dropped in perfectly. Got him! Fastball on the corner. Guerrero is two for three in this game. So certainly finishing the season better. Obviously, he's not the player he once was any longer, but I know come playoff time, we're going to need him to play pretty well. You know, we're probably going to have Reyes on the playoff roster, I imagine. There's less of a need for Royce Lewis because you're not dealing with the full schedule and off days and everything. You're going to play your best. Guerrero out at third. Lewis does give us flexibility with a pinch runner, but I feel like Geloff is going to do the exact same thing, but offer better offense. I think it's going to come down to, though, like... Say they throw a lefty in the first game, whoever we face. Are we going to play Reyes over Guerrero? At this point, I think so. What if they throw a righty? Are we playing Reyes over Guerrero? I'm not sure. Line drive, base hit, Miguel Vargas. Oh, boy! Crank to right, a rise! No longer a save situation for Penn Murphy. Never did I think that Arise would transform his game when we signed him. 25 homers on the season. And what this does is it gives Fran Mil Reyes one more at bat to try to get his 40th home run. Facing a fresh pitcher as well, and this one is not quite hit well enough. Let's go to the ninth. I already had Morgan in the game. Might as well leave him in there. Morrell is the batter, and we'll wait to see if we get an update on the Rangers and Giants. Five pitches, four strikes. Almost got him to go around on that curve. Oh, the Rangers have closed the gap a bit. It's 8-7 to seven in the eighth inning. Come on, San Francisco. Give us hope for one more day. Ball four on Morrell. If we do lose this division, though, it's, it's going to feel odd losing the division to a team that we won the season series against so handily. Like 8-3 to three or 8-4, to four, like it wasn't even close. I think we had a couple sweeps of them. Trying to end things here, but Cal Raleigh says not so fast. Two on for the Mariners. We certainly don't want to see Soto again in this game. They're two batters away from getting there. On the ground, this could be it. And that's a victory for Oakland. Two games to go in the season, but will those games be consequential? It depends on what happens on the other side of the bay. Really good game for Henry Vasquez. Offense came through for us. Solid victory. Let's go to the next one. Texas was able to hold on against San Francisco 8-7. They tried. The Giants surely tried. Will Bednar did not want to help us out. You know what? My math is struggling right now. We're two games back. We have two games. They have two games. We can still tie. That means Joe Michael's final start matters. 
I will say, though, their game is a day game, so it, it might not matter, actually. So I have no way of knowing beforehand what the score of their game is. So Joe Michael is just going to play this finale, and hopefully the Giants won so that we can continue on this uh, drama. One last start for Joe Michael. Looking for win number 20. Here we are. As soon as that ticker wants to show up, we'll find out what Texas did today. We now have our answer. We're a game and a half back. This matchup actually matters. The Giants came through. Deep to center where Carlson is in today's game. He makes the catch. And there's the first strikeout for Joe as he gets Zapata. They're giving me all these different updates that aren't related to scores. It's all hitting streaks and five RBI games, breaking slumps. We know they lost, though. One, two, three first. We're facing Michael Soroka in this game as well, and he's had a very up and down year, but his numbers at the end of the year are going to look pretty solid. Gillov right over the shortstop, a base hit to center field. And a rise follows it up, a base hit into right. And here is 39 home run hitting Fran Mill Reyes. Just missed the sinker. Two days to accomplish this goal. Two on here in the first. Waving at a slider. Can't have that. Got him with the inside fastball. And there is the score down below. Giants took this game 9-6. to six. Hopefully they got somebody good going in the next game. You Neil Cruz now. He's at 29 homers. Ground ball up the middle. And that ends the first inning. We move top three now. It's still scoreless. Michael with two gone and throws too perfect of a pitch to Haynes. A man on with a walk and looks like he's going to be left stranded. Just a bit in front. That was a 3-1 changeup right over the heart of the plate. Easy home run pitch. 3-2 now and... Uh, well hit ball, but right at second. I'm giving Soderstrom multiple off days ahead of the postseason. He needs a little more stamina recovery than most. I think when they get to the postseason, though, like everybody just kind of goes back to 100%. And down goes Susak. Really good first trip for Michael Soroka. Facing Zapata to start the fourth inning. Michael yet to allow a hit. Trying to get that 20th victory. Weakly hit to the right side for the first out. I never know quite how to pitch to Juan Soto. It's just kind of hoping for the best. There are no right answers. 2-1. And a fastball for strike two. Michael throws in the dirt. And now we're just going to listen to the catcher. I don't know what location he wants. Three, two, two seamer off the plate. Rodriguez ahead of it. And it's a one, two count. Popped him up. Arise retreating for the second out. Pitching to Michael Tolia. And Joe Michael falls behind. He's walked a pair already. And walks Tolia. Wow, are you kidding me? Cal Raleigh is the batter. He's ahead 2-0. -oh. 
Finally back in the zone. Let's see if Michael can finish this inning. Fastball up and too far. Three and one. Wow. All right. Bases loaded. All via walks as well. Here is Leonardo Rivas. A chance to break the game open. Fouled off and finally ahead again. Got him! Inning over. But Michael's got to find the strike zone a bit more consistently. Here we go again. We got Reyes and his quest for 40. Out in front of the slider. Wow, got him. See, I sometimes struggle with our taller hitters at, like, having a good feel for their strike zone. I thought that was too high, but it was clearly a strike. You sneal Cruz now, and not chasing that. No, chasing ball four. Soroka really dealing tonight. Out of reach for Luis Arise as the Mariners pick up their first base hit. Jordan Diaz? Wasn't he with us in year one? With D potential? Diaz to left field and under it. It's Cruz. Michael getting ahead of Haynes and it's the weak grounder and probably no outs. Put it in just the right spot. Two on now for the Mariners, who have had five base runners over the last two innings. I don't think Michael's going to add on to his complete game total in this one. It's just not going cleanly or quickly enough. Carlson in center. If it's anybody else, they might try to run. And Soto lifts it for Cabrera. We catch a break on that swing. Inning over. Soroka's at his best. Michael's playing well. Maybe not at his absolute best. But who can chase the starting pitcher first? Both have only allowed two hits. Michael does have uh, six base runners allowed. However, as Sweeney nearly sent it down the line. Bounce to third base. And Sweeney is retired. What about Manny Reyes? How do we feel about him going into the postseason? As our September call-up, he has not played a ton. When he has played, though, he's played well. I think getting him starts in the final two games is kind of critical to just see what we got here. But he's out on that ground ball. Julio Rodriguez leads off the sixth. Joe Michael is currently at 73 pitches. And the only way he's going to be eligible for a win is if he pitches until we can get him a lead. Having trouble getting strikes today. 3-1 coming to Rodriguez. Not even close. Tolia sends it to Cabrera, manning right field, and he makes the catch. Center field, and Raleigh continues a good series. That's two more base runners. They've had multiple in three straight innings. Hard to see me wanting to give Michael the seventh at this rate. Rivas now. Better pitch that time, and that could end it, but it doesn't. That was a pretty quick turn, too. So runners at the corners. Derek Hill with two down. Very critical at bat. Strike one. Michael does not get strike two. Shouldn't have needed to appeal. It was a strike. There is strike two. 
How do we wrap it up? Weakly chopped on to Sweeney. Hill with good speed, but still thrown out. End of the sixth. Soroka's pitch count, I just realized how absurd that is. 48. He's going to go complete if we can't take him out. We've got to get some, some offense going here. Man, that is a filthy change. Bounced up the first base line and an easy play there. Soroka had some really good seasons with us. I wonder how his stats compare. He had four excellent seasons with us, and this year compares to them. A lot of similar numbers. He's a consistent pitcher, so it's not really much of a surprise. Although his war is higher than it ever was with us. His strikeout rate is higher. His walk rate is lower. So overall, you can argue they're getting a better version than we ever had in the four years. And how poetic would that be if he ended our season right here? As far as our division title hopes, we're going to the postseason. But this is a must-have game for us. I'd prefer Soroka not end our dreams. That time we connected, but having trouble timing it up. Not like Susak was going to hit a solo homer there, right? There's no chance. Ground ball and in a tough spot. He's like four feet onto the grass and still makes the play. Come on. Joe Michael still in the game for now. Yet to hit 90 pitches. He's got Haynes. Ashby warming up to follow him. Got him looking. Joe Michael currently has a shutout through six and two thirds. And it feels like he's not even close to his best version right now. Ground ball. And Sweeney makes it seven shutout innings. And that could be it for Joe Michael today. If he wants win number 20, we got a score here. Arise, Reyes and Cruz. And a drive to deep right field. To the wall and off the top. Arise to second base. He did not miss by much. Unreal how close that came. And it was this close. Just uh, a foot or two. If it didn't slope down like that, it's gone. If we have the eight foot fence all the way to like here. But I thought it was aesthetically better to have it slope down. Fran Mil Reyes trying to put us in front, not get Homer 40. That's the main focus. Out in front. His changeup is one of the better changeups I've seen in a while. I cannot match the speed. Got him. Low sinker, strike three. Reyes is one of those guys I seem to always chase the two strike pitches with. Maybe it's the big strike zone and it's just kind of harder to adapt to. Let's get Cruz up now and he's love playing against the M's this season. 13 for 41, 317 average, and five of his 29 home runs. Ground ball to the right side and knocked down as Cruz beats it out. Arise moves to third. And now Trey Sweeney looks to put us ahead. 0 for 2. He's been one of those players this year I felt extremely confident in. I wanted to hold back there, but it, it never seems to work out that way. Three and one. The rookie, Manny Reyes, is on deck. Ball four. So now they got a force anywhere. Reyes does not run great. We don't want to see him have a third ground out. We want to get something we can get under and drive. 
Waved at a slider strike one. And just cannot lay off. Oh, and two on Manny. We take that one at least. That was the one to hit, and he just got a piece. Got him. Just can't get a piece of that change up right now, and it's out number two. Soroka will exit. And they're going to bring in the righty, Chris Flexen. He'll face Miguel Cabrera. He's had a much better September than August, but the power we saw earlier in the year has mostly vanished. Two down, bases juiced. Just cannot lay off right now. Everything looks good is the problem. For some reason, everything looks like a strike. And then we can't catch that one. It's 0-2 on Cabrera. It's drilled to right field and foul. 8.2 feet outside of the foul pole. On the ground and weakly hit to short, wrapping up the inning, leaving him loaded. Joe Michael will only have 19 victories on the season. We do make our move with Ashby. It's a tie game. I want a fresh arm to face their best. Aaron Ashby in the game. A rise to his right. Always good to get a one pitch out on Soto. A piece of it that time. Ahead now, one, two. Got him, strike three. And now two strikes on Tolia. Aaron Ashby looking for another one, two, three. And Geloff at third completes. Hey, a base hit drilled the center. That's Daniel Susak. And we're desperate right now. We're still in this division hunt. And we got to score a run. Back to the top of the order again, Geloff. And a block by the catcher, Raleigh. But we're actually getting a favorable count for once. Got a piece of the edge. It's even. Got him on strikes. Just a 92 mile per hour fastball in the zone. That was definitely a late swing. Stealing was Susak. I was okay if like him getting caught stealing ends the inning. Cause we'd have a rise lead off the ninth. Instead it'll be Fran Mil Reyes. Top of the ninth and the pitching has been excellent. Ashby getting a second inning after a nine-pitch eighth. He's got the bottom of the order, and the Mariners have been playing a bunch of players we don't even know. Rivas retired. They're playing a really fast lineup, though. All these guys have good speed. Hill out in front, and Ashby a strike away. Checked his swing, and the count's full. Lifted for Cruz in left, but he has a play. Bottom nine, a chance to go and walk this off. The hitting has been ugly, but all it's going to take is one swing. Wow, I can't believe he fouled it backwards. Had a hanging slider that could have ended the game. Flexed in now, two strikes. And misses in. A drive in the air, center field, and an easy catch. And that'll bring up the rookie, Yusniel Cruz. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. Now how do we score the run? Sweeney's up. We know he could end it as well. But he bounces it to second base. They will get Cruz, and that's it. And that's going to bring up Manny Reyes. He is 0 for 3. 
Two ground outs and a strikeout. Inside, and we're working a 2-2 count. The rookie looking for his big moment. Three and two, so at least Sweeney's going to leave early. Something to the gap gives him a chance to score. And it's headed to left center! Sweeney heading to third! He's going to end it! It's over! Manny Reyes walks off the Mariners! It's the rookie who delivers in the ninth! We still have our chance. Did not hit well in this game, but finally got one to go. Athletics victorious in just one game out of first place. And so it just so happens we play 162 games and we're going to need every last one of them to the final day of the season. It is September 30th. We play at 1235 while Texas plays at 105. So our games are going to be played side by side. And they get to face a San Francisco pitcher with a near 5 ERA, but he's a high strikeout guy. So high variance. If he has a really good day, then, you know, any pitcher can have a really good day. But hopefully Kyle Harrison can do us a big favor today. If we win and the Rangers lose, we are division champions. There is no more game 163. We would own the tiebreaker head-to-head. -head. And here is your matchup on the season's final day. What a season it has been. Drama down to the last day. Will we be a division winner and get the first round by, or will we have to go on the road as the wild card? It's a very big difference. Ken Waldachuk gets the mound today. We face Cleveland Haynes first while the chuck ahead one two and got him trying to put down the bunt is Rivas and it did not connect properly I believe he just tried that a few minutes ago in the previous game now he strikes out two strikes quickly to Juan Soto and does he go? Yes! One, two, three, first for Waldachuk. And we face Walter Ford. And need a, a more patient, just better overall approach in this game so we can get the offense that we need. Ford will give us opportunities. We just got to be ready for him. I can't focus too much on the home run milestones. I got to focus on getting us six or seven runs. Miguel Vargas leads the way. Now, he was the hero in the previous game, of course, but Manny Reyes not in the starting lineup. His stamina was very low. So we have Vladimir Guerrero back in. And a drive hit out to left center. Vargas sends it back, but not far enough. And there's your score down below. Giants up early 2-1. to one. Both teams score in the first. But so far, so good. A rise to right field and a base hit that gets by the right fielder. It was backed up, but a rise will get to second base. And here's Fran Mil Reyes. Let's get on the board early. I always end up out in front, man. Board ahead. Two strikes. And a ground ball, base hit right field. A rise held at third. And now Soderstrom looks to put us on the board. Hitting 295. And that's outside. 24 homers, 87 RBIs. Up the middle, base hit center field, a run scores, and there's still only one out. 
Eusneel Cruz gets his chance. Still hitting in the 250s. In the air, left center. Back to the track, and it is caught. No advance. Yes, I thought for a moment we might have had it. It was 99 off the bat. It's pretty well hit. It was right down the middle, had near perfect timing. I'm not even sure if perfect timing is really perfect or if just, you know, there's like a close enough factor and sometimes it gives you perfect and sometimes you get what I just had. Base hit! We're going to wave Reyes, getting aggressive. The throw comes in offline. And Reyes dives in with our second run. A lot of center field hits here, and that's the best hit, perhaps. Two runs in the first. It's going how we hoped. And now Guerrero trying to go oppo. It ends the inning. All the Chuck feels like he's pitching at his best right now. I know we're only 13 pitches in. Just missed. Base. Ooh, he knocked it down, actually, and recovered in time. What a stretch by Vladdy. I thought that was a base hit. I can't doubt the abilities of Miguel Vargas. Usually to get a guy like Rodriguez, you got to make a perfect play. But Vargas is clearly really good at third. Jam to left and dumped in for an Aaron Don single. And now Vargas to left field and that's dropped in. It's back to back. The score is the same, by the way, in the Texas San Francisco game. Giants up still two to one. Arise, right field, and it's three in a row. Going to wave him home and make it 3 nothing. Aaron Don scores. We've adjusted our approach offensively. It's working early on. Haven't had a big extra base hit yet. That could still be on the way. We have seven hits? I didn't realize it was that many. This time, it's popped up again late. My swing with Reyes feels a little bit off right now. And that's going to bring us Soderstrom. We already got one. Let's see if we can get something with two out again. And it's a drive hit out to right field, but it is catchable. So we skip ahead a little bit in this one, and Luis Arise just hit a two-run homer. We are now up 5-0. Reyes still on the hunt for number 40. Good pitch inside by Ford. Two and two. Just cannot lay off. Base hit right field. There's the first for Seattle. Again, they get the late start offensively. And a drive hit out to deep left. Cruz watching this one go out. It's 5-2. to two. Another hit. That's three straight after four innings of being hitless. Nobody out, by the way, as the Mariners try to get back in the game. And I'm waiting to see the latest score update from the Texas game. Out in front is Raleigh. While the Chuck, weak grounder, and Guerrero made a really poor play. Tried to slide for it and didn't even touch the ball. So it's the fourth consecutive hit. Kind of a frustrating sequence. Thought we had a double play there. 
Way out in front. Really good pitch from Waldachuk. Let's see if he can bounce back. The 0 2. Got him. Diaz takes a strike. It's an 0 2 count again. And that was elevated, but lifted for Carlson. Giants still winning 2-1, to one, by the way. They're in the third inning, so our game is probably going to end before theirs. We did have a half-hour earlier start time, after all, so I expected that. Weak grounder, and this one ends the top half of the fifth. A strikeout for Waldachuk opens the sixth. Still a three-run game. Might be his final inning of the regular season if he can get Soto and then Rodriguez. Nasty slider. Strike three. Not at all where I wanted it to. And he's already ahead 0-2 on Rodriguez. Had that bad stretch giving up four straight hits. Wow, that should have ended the inning. And Arise can't make the play. The Pirates and Brewers are tied for the division lead right now. So I guess that's also going to come down to a tiebreaker. And we're hoping that our division is in the same situation. Morale took him yard last time they faced. And now 1-2. Morale waves and misses. So here's Luis Arise, bottom six, and he is a triple away from the cycle. Not an easy guy to hit a triple with. I think if you can go to right center, get a lucky carom off the high wall, that's your best bet. He lifts it, and it's out to center where it's an easy play. So we make the move with Ashby here in the seventh while the Giants still lead the Rangers two to one. A little too close to comfort, but the right team is in front. Strike three on Rich Cervone. Excellent pitch, he gets Raleigh. Ashby's just too good. And this could be it here when it comes to Fran Mil Reyes and Eusneel Cruz. And their attempts to reach their home run milestones. So hard to lay off these and... Had so many swings and misses with these two today. I feel like I've seen a lot of really tough pitches as well, but I should be able to lay off of them better. I just can't. Got to get a few base runners if we want to see Reyes get another chance, but it's not looking good. You sneal Cruz up with two down. He goes the other way for a base hit. There's a rocket to center. Cruz gets going on his way to third base and holds there. A two-out rally in the works. Here is Guerrero. And he sends it deep down the line, but clearly foul. Down the line, base hit. Guerrero delivers. It's a 6-2 game. He will hold there at first. And it's first and third. We have a full count to Dylan Carlson now with two gone. And the bases are now loaded for Aaron Don. 0 oh and 2. He hits it to the right side, and the play is made. We're top of the eighth inning, and bouncer to Guerrero. That's going to finish up the top half of the eighth. And we got one more inning of offense, we hope. We'll see if we get an update, too, on the Texas Giants game. It's been 2-1 for a while. 
We are going to see Reyes again, Miss Sinning. We'll see about Usneel Cruz. Slash to first base and the play made. Hey, our eyes could still hit for the cycle as well. Has to get a triple, though. He usually gets two or three triples a year, and he's already gotten two. Lifts it to right, and that ain't going to get it done. So one more AB with Fred Mill Reyes. I'd be happy just not striking out, I think. Lifted, and it's down the line. That was a late swing. My swing with Reyes has been very off today. For some reason, it's super late. So we go to the ninth inning. We did not achieve our milestones, but we have a chance to win this game, a chance to still win the division if Texas also drops their final game to the Giants. Big swing and miss. Eli Morgan is the pitcher. Rounded. Guerrero covering. Got him at first. Guerrero again. Two down. And I have not seen an update on the Texas Giants score in a while. I'm not sure we're going to before this one's over. High breaking ball is in. Two strikes now on Cervone. Eli Morgan looking to close it. Athletics win! And they close the season on a three-game winning streak. They do their job and hope the Giants can help them win the division once again. Really fun episode. I wasn't sure we'd even be in this situation, but I detailed what I thought was the most likely route in the last episode, and that was winning three of four against the Mariners, while the Giants win two of three. We got the bats going today, at least for a little while, and we did a really good job in the month of September. So let's go see if the Giants were able to hold on. We know we'll be in the postseason and our journey will open in the division round san francisco wins two to one all the runs scored early in this game they do it and who saved the finale everybody joan duran helps us one last time we did it texas takes on the yankees and we don't know our opponent yet. The One Seed Athletics are back-to-back -back American League West champions. It came down to the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. That's how close this all was. 95 wins for the A's this season. The Rangers, Yankees, and Rays made the postseason. So the defending champs are still in this. You had the Orioles win 93, the Twins win 87, we of course had 95. In the National League, the Phillies had 92 wins, and two wildcard teams also came out of the East. In the Central, the Pirates were victorious. That's a three-way tie. I'm not even sure how that's broken, honestly, if that's just division record. Because they didn't have the best division record. So I don't know what the tiebreaker is with three teams atop the division. The Cubs almost made it four. Unreal. And then the Dodgers. 97 wins to take the West and the Padres behind them. And that means we not only skip the wild card round, but we also now get to play the lowest seeded team remaining in the ALDS. So we need to simulate a few days. And I think we have our matchup here. The Yankees defeated the Texas Rangers. Why couldn't we still face the, the Tampa Bay Rays, though? Why are we automatically matched up here with the Yankees? We are the one seed, after all. The team didn't change. Minnesota won anyway. I don't know why it is like that, though. That's kind of odd. 
Either way, the Rays are knocked out. The Rangers are knocked out. We've got a best of five now instead of a best of three. So what we're going to do in the next episode then as we take on New York is we're going to do two games in that episode. And depending on how that goes, we'll determine what the following one is. But elimination games will always get their own video. So if we split here, we'll then do a two-game episode again to follow because the first game would not be elimination. I can't believe we pulled it off, though. I, I thought the division was a real long shot. This is awesome. And we've got to set our playoff roster, of course. I'm going to... Yes, I want Romero at AAA. Did they knock down Reyes? They did. And I believe I want him added to the playoff roster. Manny Reyes is not eligible. Only players on the 40-man as of September 1st. He should be postseason eligible, though, because I added him on, like, August 30th. I know I don't have a spot available. If I make room, can we make this work? Because I had wanted to take Royce Lewis off the playoff roster. Yeah, I can only add a player right now. That doesn't seem right because I knew this would be an issue and that's why I added him ahead of the deadline. I'd have to check the episode and see if I messed something up. Certainly possible. But I was pretty sure I handled that the right way. I did add him on September 1st, so I don't know why there is an issue. That's really strange. Not eligible, though, I guess. It's even right there. September 1st, Manny Ray is recalled from AAA Las Vegas. So, I don't know. I guess I have to do it now in August to make sure it works. We do have to decide the order for our pitching staff now, and... While the Chuck getting game two, I don't mind that. I'd kind of like a lefty, though, to get game three is my thing. Because I know I'll get a lefty then in New York. And I know that their stadium is designed for left-handed hitters to just pull the ball for easy home runs down the right field line. So I kind of want to get Wald the Chuck in their stadium instead of ours. Do I want Phillips or Gilbert, though, in game two? I think there's a lot of arguments to be made that Phillips was better this season. Gilbert was more up and down. Certainly good. Let me know your feedback. I'll, I'll see what you guys have to say. But I'm stoked to be playing postseason baseball again here shortly. We had ourselves another great year. I can't check on our regular season stats. I don't know why it bothers to hide that. I wish they would let you keep that stuff here. But either way, great season. We're back in the playoffs as the one seed in the ALDS. And I can't wait to get on to it next time. Remember, games one and two are coming your way. And I will see you all then. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts going into the postseason. Who should start game two? Have a great day, everybody. And I'll catch you next time.